Okay, this is the story of the clown of God. We um, read this on Tuesday, um, but some people didn't didn't hear the whole book, and I wanted to make sure that everybody had it as a reference while you're making out those graphic organizers. So this is a picture of the clown of God, and we, as you listen to the story, you'll understand why it's called that. The author's name and the illustrator, he also drew the pictures as well as wrote the words, is Tommy DePaolo, okay? And as you've heard us talking about it, we know that this is a character named Giovanni and that he is a good juggler. Many, many years ago in Sorrento, which is the name of a city in Italy, there lived a small boy named Giovanni who had no mother and no father. He dressed in rags and begged his bread and slept in doorways. But he was happy and he could do something wonderful. He could juggle. Every day he would go to Signor Baptista's fruit and vegetable stall and juggle. And you'll notice there's people watching him looking in the direction. He would juggle lemons and oranges, apples and eggplants, and even zucchini, which is a kind of vegetable. It's long and green, looks a little bit like a cucumber. Crowds would gather to watch, and when Giovanni had finished, they would buy from Signor Baptista. Then Signor Baptista's wife would give Giovanni a bowl of hot soup. It was a very good arrangement. So there's Giovanni eating the soup that he was given. One day, and we know that one day often means something's going to change, a troop of traveling players came to town, and Giovanni watched as Arlecchino and Colombina, in their beautiful clothes, danced and sang. Oh, Giovanni said to himself, that is the life for me. So when the play was over, Giovanni went and spoke to the maestro. Maestro is a word that means the master or the person in charge. No, no, said the maestro. I have no need for a ragamuffin. Go beg your bread somewhere else. But I could be very helpful, pleaded Giovanni. I could help unpack and pack up. I could take care of the donkey and maestro, added Giovanni. I can juggle. There's the show with the players. Here's Giovanni talking to the master or the maestro about joining. Not bad, said the maestro, watching him juggle with a bit more training and practice. All right. But no money, the companionship of the finest players in Italy, and a bowl of noodles. That's all. Grazie, signor, said Giovanni. Go get your things. We leave in an hour, said the maestro. And so Giovanni said goodbye to signor and signora Bautista and became a traveling player. There he is leaving with the troop and he's leading the donkey taking care of it. Not long after the maestro gave him a costume and Giovanni juggled for the crowds. He would put on a clown's face, step out from the curtain before the play began, bow, open up a colorful bag, roll out a carpet, and begin. He would juggle sticks, plates, then he would balance the plates on the sticks and twirl them. He would juggle clubs, rings, and burning torches. Finally, he would toss a red ball and an orange ball, then a yellow ball, a green, a blue, and a violet ball until it looked as if he were juggling the rainbow. And now for the sun in the heavens, he would cry. Still juggling, he would pick up a shining golden ball and toss it higher and higher, 
faster and faster. And how the crowds would cheer. Giovanni became very famous, and it wasn't long before he said goodbye to the traveling troupe and set off on his own. Up and down Italy he traveled, and although his costume became more beautiful, he always kept the face of the clown. Once he juggled for a duke, once for a prince, and it was always the same. First the sticks, then the plates, then the clubs, rings, and burning torches. Finally, the rainbow of colored balls. And now for the sun in the heavens, he would shout. And the golden balls would fly, ball would fly higher and higher. And the crowds would laugh and clap and cheer. One day, here we go with one day again. Between two towns, Giovanni was sitting in the shade of a tree eating a lunch of bread and cheese. Two brothers came down the road. Will you share your food with us, good clown? They asked. For the love of God and the blessings of our brother Francis. Sit down, good fellows, Giovanni said. There is more than enough. As the three men ate, the two brothers told Giovanni how they went from town to town, begging their food and spreading the joy of God. Our founder, Brother Francis, says that everything sings of the glory of God. Why, even your juggling, said one of the brothers. <laughs> That's well and good for men like you, but I only juggle to make people laugh and applaud, Giovanni said. It's the same thing, the brother said. If you give happiness to people, la uh, people, you give glory to God as well. If you say so, said Giovanni. But now I must be off to the next town. Arriva Dirci, good brothers, and good luck. So Arriva Dirci is Italian for goodbye. And wherever Giovanni went, the air was filled with his flying sticks and plates, his clubs and rings and torches, and always the rainbow of balls and the sun in the heavens. Ooh, did I not show you the picture of the brothers talking to Giovanni? And now here he is once again juggling. Now here he has the stick with the plates on top of it. And this, as I mentioned when I read the book, in Italy, there are places where there aren't any streets. There's actually like waterways or streams. And so people go up and down the streams. They don't drive cars or ride buggies or anything. They have boats called gondolas. And these guys are called gondoliers. They push the boats with these sticks along the waterways. And here's Giovanni, the shadow of Giovanni, and all the people watching him. Years passed. Now, that's an event, in a sense. It's a period of time, and it caused a change. Giovanni grew old, and times grew hard. People no longer stopped to watch. Oh, it's only the old clown who juggles things. We've all seen him before, they said. Giovanni was sad. But still he juggled until one day, there's one day again, he dropped the sun in the heavens and the rainbow of balls came crashing down and the crowd stood around him and laughed, but not from joy. Then they did a terrible thing. They threw vegetables and stones at Giovanni so that he had to run for his life. not demonstrating any kind of kindness there. Beside a stream, Giovanni took off his clown face. He put away his sticks and his plates, his clubs and rings and colored balls. He put away his costume and gave up juggling forever.
What little money he had was soon gone, and his clothes became rags, and he begged his bread and slept in doorways, just as he had done as a child. It's time to go home, the old man said wearily, and he headed back to his town of Sorrento. It was a cold winter night when he finally arrived in Sorrento. The wind blew hard and an icy rain was falling. Up ahead loomed the monastery church of the brothers. The windows were in darkness. Wet and cold, old Giovanni crept inside and fell in a heap in a corner. Somehow he knew he was going to be safe there. Soon he was asleep. There's Giovanni. And up here's the monastery. See, all the windows are dark. But he's going to go in anyway and find a place to sleep. It was the music that woke him up. The church was blazing with candlelight and filled with people singing, Gloria, Gloria. Giovanni could scarcely believe his eyes. So much beauty. A long procession of brothers, priests, sisters, and townspeople, all carrying beautiful gifts, was winding its way through the church. And they're all going up here to the altar and leaving their gifts. They place their gifts in front of a statue of a lady and her child. What is all this? asked old Giovanni of someone standing nearby. Why, old man, it's the birthday of the Holy Child. And we identified the Holy Child was Jesus. The woman said, it's the procession of the gifts. And if it's the birthday of the Holy Child, we know what day it is, right? Christmas Day. So there's Giovanni asking this woman what's going on. Giovanni watched in amazement until the singing was over. Then the church emptied of all the people and was darkened except for the bright candles surrounding the lady and the child. So remember, all the gifts were laid in front of this altar. And here are the candles that are the only light in the whole uh, church right now. And here is, this is supposed to be the Mother Mary, and this is supposed to be the baby Jesus. But what we noticed is that the statue, this is a statue. In the statue, the baby Jesus doesn't look very happy. He looks kind of upset or angry almost. Uh, Giovanni moved closer. The child in the lady's arms seemed so serious, so stern. Oh, lady, said Giovanni, I wish I had something to offer, too. Your child seems so sad, even with all these beautiful gifts. But wait, I used to make people smile. Giovanni opened his bag and shook out his old costume. Then he put on his clown face, bowed, rolled out the little rug, and began to juggle. First the sticks, then the plates. Next he twirled the plates on the sticks, and then the clubs, and then the rings. The brother Sexton, who was coming in to lock the doors, saw Giovanni juggling. He was horrified. <gasps> Father, master, he cried, rushing off to get the priest. A sacrilege! Come quickly! So he didn't believe. He didn't think someone should be in the church doing a juggling act. So here's the priest going to get, the, or excuse me, the sexton going to get the priest. So the priest is going to be somebody different, but the sexton is the one who's upset. But we watch. Look at look at Giovanni. He's smiling again. Remember, there were, it was a long time where he wasn't smiling at all. But Giovanni didn't hear or notice him. And now, said Giovanni, smiling at the face of the child, first the red ball, then the orange, next the yellow, and the green, blue, and violet. Around and up they went until they looked 
like a rainbow. And finally, Giovanni cried, the sun in the heavens, the gold ball flew up and around and around, higher and higher. Giovanni had never juggled so well in all his life. Where's the gold ball way up at the top? Higher and higher, faster and faster. A blaze of color filled the air. It was magnificent. Giovanni's heart was pounding. For you, sweet child, for you, he cried. But suddenly, his old heart stopped. And Giovanni fell dead. The priest and the brother Sexton came running in. Stooping over old Giovanni, the priest said, Why, the poor clown is dead. May his soul rest in peace. But the brother Sexton backed away, and with his mouth wide open, he stared at the statue of the lady and her holy child. Oh, father, he said, pointing. Oh, father, look. That's Giovanni and the priest. Here's the sexton looking very shocked. The child in the statue was smiling and in his hand he held the golden ball. So we saw that Giovanni went through many experiences and change. And an important change was for him to realize that he had the gift of juggling and that he could use that gift even in the midst of this celebration. It was his only gift to the Christ child, and God was pleased. That's the end.